This is a pretty interesting question from 2018 AMC 12A, problem 19 on the test. Let A be the set of positive numbers that have no prime factors other than 2, 3, or 5. The infinite sum, 1 over 1, plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, and so on. All of these, of the reciprocals of the elements of A, can be expressed as m over n. And we simply have to find m plus n. So let's think about this. So we are examining the numbers that has prime factorization in the form 2 to the some power, 3 to the some power, 5 to the some power, and we're not going to have any other prime factors other than 2, 3, or 5, so we're not going to have anything like 7 squared. That's not allowed. 2, 3, and 5 is all we have. And we are looking at every single one of these numbers, and we're basically taking reciprocal, flipping them upside down, and we're adding up all of them. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 doesn't count, 8, 9, 10, 11 doesn't work, 12, 13 doesn't work, 14 doesn't work, because 14 contains 7 in the prime factorization, and we have infinitely many of them, and we are adding up all of these. So. Since we are looking at AMC, and since we are looking at powers of various primes, you may think of geometric series, geometric series, infinite geometric series in particular. So you may, you may try to attempt to connect the sum of infinite geometric series with the infinite sum at hand. And it's not very obvious for if you have never looked at generating functions or partitions of numbers, how to connect these two ideas together. So let's think about this. I'm assuming that you do not know about partitions of numbers or how to get generating function from that. If you do, then this question is basically a really basic exercise. But if you do not, if you have never seen these kind of questions before, then you do have to put in some thought before connecting these two ideas together. So let's think about this. Since we are looking at the powers of 2, powers of 3, and powers of 5, so we are examining three things simultaneously, and that's confusing us just a bit. Let's break the question down. Let's make it simpler by just restating it as looking at the numbers whose prime factors are only 2 and 3. So for now, let's ignore this 5. Let's simplify the problem, try to solve an easier one, and make a more general statement, including the 5. So in this case, is it easier to do? Well, let's think about this. Let's say we do not contain any 3. So let's consider a case where we have 2 to the 8 power and 3 to the 0 power. We only have 2s. In this case, we are going to have 1 over 1, so 2 to the 0 power, plus 1 over 2 to the 1st power, plus 1 over 2 to the 2nd power, plus 1 over 2 cubed, and so on. So if we do not have 3, this is all the numbers we are going to have. What about the case where we have 1, 3? In that case, we are going to have 1 over 1 times 3, plus 1 over 2 times 3, 1 over 2 squared times 3, plus 1 over 2 cubed times 3, and so on. Because in this case, each of our numbers are going to be multiplied by 3 with respective power of 2. 2 to the 0 times 3, 2 to the 1st power times 3, 2 to the 2nd power times 3, and so on. So what about the case where we have 2 to the 2nd power? What about the case we have 2 to the... No, 2 to the some power times 3 to the second power. In this case, we're going to have the same thing, but now we're going to be multiplying by 9. 3 squared, 1 over 2 times 3 squared, plus 1 over 2 squared times 3 squared, plus 1 over 2 cubed times 3 squared, and so on. And obviously, this number is going to change 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to infinity. So we are basically adding up all of these infinite geometric series. So we're summing up all of these infinite geometric series. And how can we simplify that sum? Well, you may realize that from this entire sum, we can factor out one third, we can factor out one third, and we're going to have exactly the summation given right there. We're going to have one plus one half 
plus 1 over 2 squared, and so on. And from this one, we can factor out 1 over 3 squared, and we're going to get the same summation, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 over 2 squared, and so on. So we know when we add up every single one of these, it's basically going to be the summation at hand, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 2 cubed, and so on, times 1, times 1, plus 1 third, plus 1 over 3 squared, and so on. So we know, we know this thing. We know every single number that can be written in the form 2 to the a, 3 to the b, is basically the product of these two, these two infinite geometric series. So, now the extension is pretty easy to make. We also want to include the powers of 5. So we simply have to multiply this product. We simply have to multiply this product the same thing, just with powers of 5. So 1 plus 1 fifths plus 1 over 5 squared and so on. So that's it. That's our answer. That we simply have to simplify this thing. And just to make sure you know what I'm talking about, let's say you want to get 1 over 2 squared times 3 cubed times 5. In this case, we can simply get that by multiplying this thing and this thing, and this thing. So you see that every single one of the numbers in the infinite geometry series that we want to evaluate can be found by multiplying these three expressions. So how do we evaluate this? Well, some of the infinite geometry series is a over 1 minus r. The first term is always 1 for this one. So we have 1 over 1 minus r. For the first one, we have 1 over 1 minus 1 half. For the second one, we have 1 over 1 minus 1 third. For the last one, we have 1 over 1 minus 1 fifth, which evaluates to 2 times 3 halves times 5 fourths, which is simply 15 over 4. So we know our answer is 15 over 4. So we know m over n. We know m over n is 15 over 4. So m plus n is going to be 15 plus 4 or 19. So the answer to this question is C.